What's going on, guys? Welcome in. This is Benzie's Bit, episode number six. Uh, we got an action-packed show for you today. Um, first and foremost, a big shout out to the RTF Sports Network. Make sure you guys are checking them out on Facebook as well as the website, www.rtfsportsnetwork.com. Also, make sure you're checking out our affiliate website, which is our main show, Twist, the Week in Sports Talk. That's twistsportstalk.com. First, I want to plug something, a project that we're actually uh, incorporated in with Twist, and that is the Fantasy Football Black Book 2020. Author is Joe Pisapia, or Pisapaya. I think it's Pisapaya. We've had him on Twist multiple times. Make sure you check this out. It is the number one selling fantasy book currently on Amazon. That's where I suggest you go and get it. Once again, the Fantasy Black Book 2020. You can flip to page 12. You'll see a half-page ad for Twist, the Week in Sports Talk. So I want to give that a quick plug just so you guys know what's going on. Um, Today's show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a mock draft. My first mock draft on Benzie's bit, it is going to be a full PPR format draft, which I will be using the Sleeper app. I will also be getting into things like the Benzie's buzz, which is all the current events that are happening right now for the most part, and give my opinion on those. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at TwistBenz for all my other opinions and expertise on those opinions. So... Make sure you're checking that out. So first and foremost, let's start out with our mock draft. That's what we're all here for, especially myself. Very excited about that. So I am going to be picking the sixth pick in a 12-team league. Okay, so 12 teams. I got the sixth pick. I will be doing more mock drafts in the future just to see how the drafts fall. So that's where we're going to start. Let's go through the first five picks of this mock draft so far. So at number one, Saquon Barkley win. At number two, most would think Christian McCaffrey didn't go number one. No, he didn't. And he didn't go number two either. At number two, it was Michael Thomas. Three, Christian McCaffrey. Four, Ezekiel Elliott. And five, Delvin Cook. So at the sixth spot right now, some of the top Um, Available prospects are Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake, Tyreek Hill, Nick Chubb. Obviously, you still got Hopkins on the board, Devontae Adams for our Green Bay guy, Green Bay Greg out there. Um, So it's a tough pick for me. Usually, I would like to take a running back in the first round. That's really tough, obviously, right now, simply because Derrick Henry in a full PPR league, he's not getting a lot of looks in the passing game. But in the running game, if he can hold up, he's a monster. Um, Obviously, my big, my first overall wide receiver this year was Hopkins. I think Hopkins is going to be a monster. But then again, do I want the bell cow or do I want the targets? Tyree Kill, obviously, is a great option that's still there and that's where I think I'm going to go I love the aspect of the Chiefs offense in fantasy football so I'm going to take my first pick in this mock draft at number six Tyreek Hill so I'm going to go ahead and pick him and let's see what else falls off the board here so Derrick Henry went after him Kenyon Drake Josh Jacobs Julio Jones Joe Mixon Miles Sanders Nick Chubb, Devontae Adams, Patty Mahomes goes in the second round, third pick. Hopkins after him, Kamara, Eckler. That's a crazy pick in of itself just because I feel like that's kind of high for him. But let's see where we lay now. So my next pick, I already know who that's going to be, but I'll give you some names. So you got Chris Godwin, Aaron Jones, Lamar Jackson still there, Kelsey, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and Gurley are some of the top names. I'm going to go running back with this pick, and I'm going to take a Packer here. Shout out GBG once again. Um, I am going to let my allegiances towards the Vikings and set those aside, and I'm going to be taking Aaron Jones in the second round with my second round pick. Here we go. So Aaron Jones is off the board. 
Godwin goes next, Galladay, Lamar Jackson, and Patty Mahomes both leave in the second round. And let's see where we're at. So in the third round, it went Gurley, Evans, Le'Veon Bell, George Kittle, and Leonard Fournette. Some of the notable names that I have to choose from is Thielen, Melvin Gordon, Juju Smith-Schuster, David Johnson, James Conner, and so far down the list. Um, I do want to have a double-head, double-headed backfield, so we are going to go running back at this position. Um, just because I think in this year's draft, it is going to be important for me to grab running backs early. I know I didn't grab one in the first round. I could have had Derrick Henry, but I passed up for the cheetah Tyree kill. So with this pick, I am going to go, like I said, running back. I'm not going to take Melvin Gordon because I don't know what they're going to do with him and Philip Lindsay. I'm not going to take David Johnson because I don't believe in the offense of Houston this season. Um, and then after that, I've got James Conner, Chris Carson, um, Those are the two that I'm really looking at. I do like Chris Carson, but with the fumbling issue, I think with Big Ben coming back for the Steelers this year, I'm going to give Connor another, a boost here and take him in my third round. All right. So James Connor has been selected. So let's go through my first three picks in the first round. I took Tyree kill at pick number six, second round, Aaron Jones, third round, James Connor. And now coming back into the fourth round, let's see how that panned out. So in the fourth round, we had Cooper Cup go off the board, Adam Thielen, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, Allen Robinson, and right before my pick was David Montgomery. All right, so at the wide receiver position, which I feel like is pretty deep, I do have my wide receiver one out there as Tyree Kill. Um, I tend to want to really wait. Like I was saying earlier, I want to make sure that I'm getting my running back core. I want to make sure that I'm prepared as I haven't been in many seasons past with having a strong running back core because how many running backs get hurt? Lots of them do. Not to say other positions don't, but a lot of them do. I tend to not look for quarterbacks until farther down the board. So I am going to see what I have here in running backs I have Taylor, obviously a rookie for Indianapolis Colts. I'm going to wait there. I have Ingram for Baltimore, Singletary, and Mostert. Mostert's a question mark for me. I am going to go with the touchdown availability of Ingram, Mark Ingram, for Baltimore. So I've got my three backs. I've got Aaron Jones, James Conner, Mark Ingram, and, of course, my first-round pick of Tyree Kill. Okay, so now we're falling in to the fifth round. It has laid out as such. DJ Chark, A.J. Brown, T.Y. Hilton, Stephon Diggs, and Keenan Allen. So here I am in the fifth round. Wide receivers that are available, Metcalf, Sutton, Lockett, McLaurin, A.J. Green, Hollywood Brown, Devontae Parker. It's a tough pick for me. Let's check out tight ends. Mark Andrews is there. I feel like his availability and his usage will be another great team to choose from. Baltimore is going to be putting up a bunch of points. So that would be a leaning. I'm leaning towards Mark Andrews with this pick. Um, I do like Lockett a lot as well to have him and Tyree Kill as my wideouts. I think that's where I'm going to lean. So Tyler Lockett is going to go off the board and join our squad. Once again, here we go. So Metcalf went after me, Mark Andrews after that, Kareem Hunt, Cortland Sutton, Cam Akers, Kyler Murray. Then in the sixth round, it went Gronk ahead of the Walrus. The Walrus went right after him, Darren Waller, McLaurin, DeAndre Swift, Dak Prescott, Devontae Parker, and now is two me. So now I'm looking at the full scheme of things. You've got AJ Green, Hollywood Brown, you've got Deshaun Watson, but better yet, you've got Russell Wilson. Love Russell Wilson. Love the connection of him and Tyler Lockett on my team. So that is my pick in the sixth round of Russ. Go right ahead. So let's recap the team once again. Tyree Kill and Tyler Lockett are my wideouts so far. Aaron Jones, James Conner, and Mark Ingram are my backs, and Russell Wilson is behind center. Now we are into the seventh round, and it went Damian Williams, Debo Samuel, Brandon Cooks, Ronald Jones, J.K. Dobbins, 
and let's see where I'm going to pick. So I do not have a tight end at this point, and I do see Evan Ingram is on the board. I like that pick a lot, but let's take a glance at the running back position. Keyshawn Vaughn, Sony Michelle, Marlon Mack, and Jordan Howard round out the top of the running back position. At wideouts, you have Gallup, Johnson, Boyd, and Fuller, as well as Judy and Edelman. Um, I'm not really in... I'm not really trying to touch anybody on the Patriots offense simply because I don't know how that will pan out. So I am going to go ahead and go to the tight end position and I'm going to take Evan Ingram off the board. I know he has struggled with injuries to date, really, especially last season. But when he was in last year, the numbers he was putting up with Danny Dimes were solid. And I like that as a tight end one. Now, I'm going to go back to the tight end position. I tend to do this in a lot of my drafts, especially um, in 12-team formats. Tight ends, a very thin pond to be picking from. So I have the choices of Tyler Higbee, Hunter Henry, Cook, Fant. Hooper is still on the board as well, who I'm very high on this year. I think that... Baker will be able to utilize him similar to Matty Ice, not comparing Baker to Matty Ice in talent wise and just wisdom wise at the quarterback position. But I am going to go with Hooper back to back tight ends at the seventh and eighth round. So I've got my tight ends taken care of with Evan Ingram and Austin Hooper. I've got two wide receivers and three running backs so far. So at the running back position, we have Philip Lindsay, Tariq Cohen, Carry on Johnson and Latavius Murray at the wide receiver position. I have Edelman Slayton, Emmanuel Sanders and Henry Ruggs. So I, I will not personally, I will not take two quarterbacks in my league simply because if I need them. And of course I do continually say simply is because I know I can grab one off of the waiver. If need be, if you look on past seasons, Quarterbacks have gotten hurt. You've had plenty of options on the waiver wire to fill in for week or weeks. Um, so I am going to go with the wide receiver pond, and I am going to lean towards. Oh, I see my guy, and I'm going to reach for him because that's who I want. I want Justin Jefferson, Jets, Minnesota Viking, nickname Jets. Right. So we'll put him on the squad wide receiver two for the Vikes. I know as a rookie, especially without OTAs and things of that nature, he's not getting a lot of looks currently in workouts with Kirk, but I am confident in his abilities. And I think he will get a lot of work since Diggs is no longer there. So we're into the 10th round. Currently I have Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson, Tyler Lockett as my wideouts, Aaron Jones, James Conner, Mark Ingram as my backs. I am going to go running back here most likely as long as I like what I see. You know, you got Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, Justin Jackson, Chase Edmonds. So we're getting slim on running back positions, but I do see one that I'm hoping to get on the turn. So now I'm going to go check out the wide receiver pool. You have McCole Hardman, Crowder, Christian Kirk, Pittman, Deshaun Jackson, John Brown, Rieger, things like that. I'm going to go Christian Kirk in the 10th round. I like that solid pick. I think you'll get a lot of looks, especially with Hopkins taking a lot of the spotlight on that team. So let's go with that as our 10th round pick. Now, prior to my 11th round pick, it looked like Michael Pittman, Baker Mayfield, Jared Cook, Baltimore Ravens defense, and Drew Locke are off the board. So now I'm going to go to the running back position, and I'm going to take a sleeper as my running back on the bench. And it's going to be Carlos Hyde. Yeah, Carlos Hyde. I'm going to take him. I had him last season. I know he's changed teams and gone to Seattle, but I still think he's going to get some reps. And that's key for me. You know, he's going to be sitting behind Carson, maybe even Penny. I think Carlos has more talent than Rashad Penny. So that's where I'm going to go with that pick. Now we're getting in the 12th round. So we have the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th round left. I usually do save my defense and kicker for the last two rounds. So these last two picks before them is going to be kind of crucial for me. So we have our running backs that are still available, Justin Jackson, 
Chase Edmonds, then you're getting in the bottom of the barrel. You know, you still got AP, Adrian Peterson on the board, things like that. The the eternal one, Frank Gore, who is infinite, never done. Um, those are some of your backs that are on the board. As wide receivers go, you got John Brown, Rieger, who should get some looks. But I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk. San Fran went up and grabbed this guy. Um, Emmanuel Sanders is no longer there, and they've really needed some wideouts. You know, you've had a bunch of missed opportunities at San Fran, so that is going to be my pick. Um, now we're into the 13th round. A lot of weird names. Like, who would have ever thought that Elshon Jeffrey would be sitting there in the 13th round? We're pretty stacked up on wide receivers, so now is where I'm going to go into the bargain bin here and see what we have for running backs. Running backs, few and far between. I mean, you could go with a handcuff at this position, and since I took James Conner, I will go ahead and handcuff them. I think that Jalen Samuel showed some promise, but he obviously didn't have a quarterback that was putting up any sort of threat in the passing game last year. So I will take a handcuff in the 13th round, and that will be Jalen Samuels. So there's my handcuff. Now the final two rounds, defense and kicker. Let's see how those fall. So in the 14th round, it went Chargers defense, Will Lutz, Jonu Smith, Seattle Seahawks defense, Brashard Perryman, and Ryan Tannehill. Some of my options at defense are the Tennessee Titans, the Bucks, Dolphins, Saints, Cowboys, Packers. I am going to go with the Cowboys defense. Trusty, pro bowlers. I like it. Indoors, at home, like that even better. Cowboys defense is going to be my pick in the 14th round. And then into the 15th round, I do need a kicker. So I am going to go ahead and page over there and see who's still on the board. You got Prater from Detroit. I'm going to pass. You got Dan, the man, Bailey. Hopefully a Minnesota Vikings kicker that can knock some down for us. You also have McManus for Denver and Crosby for the Packers. I'm going to go ahead and get some more purple on this squad and take Dan Bailey, trusty Rusty, knock them down. And that will do it for my first mock draft at the sixth position of a 12 team league. So let's go ahead and go through it. I did take Tyree kill in the first round. After that, I had Aaron Jones, then James Connor, Mark Ingram. After that, Tyler Lockett, Russell Wilson for the combo. Evan Ingram and Austin Hooper as my tight ends. Justin Jefferson, Christian Kirk, Carlos Hyde, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Samuels, Dallas Cowboys defense, and Dan Bailey. And that will solidify the first mock draft of the year. All right, getting into more fun stuff. Let's go over Benzie's baller of the week. My baller of the week, it should be plural this week. It should be ballers of the week. We're going to go with Bubba Wallace and his peers for the NASCAR presentation that came before the race um, in Talladega. So the sports drivers and crew took it upon themselves prior to Monday's race to push the circuit's only full-time African-American driver and his car down pit road. They, then they stood behind him during the playing of the national anthem. When Wallace climbed out of the vehicle, he was overcome with emotion, crying as each driver took a turn to hug him. Wallace later wrote on Twitter, together. Simple as that. Together is the only way forward. Um, I applaud NASCAR and how they've been handling all the craziness that has happened, including the noose, which is just embarrassing on the human race that that would even be something that would happen. So for Bubba Wallace and his peers to have this happen is just emotional. And uh, once again, together, as Bubba Wallace wrote on Twitter, is indeed the only way forward. Bonehead of the week. Let's get into that. So my bonehead is obviously the opposite of the baller of the week. Bonehead of the week is going to Kyle Hadala, 29 years old from Florida, who knocked out Goddard. Yeah, Dallas Goddard knocked him out. If you have seen these videos, what a sucker punch. What a cheap shot. Glad Goddard is okay. But wow, 
of course, Kyle Hadala, 29 year old from Florida. Big dude, but I would watch out, Kyle. All right, getting into some of the quick buzz around sports. We'll start with a new post that happened today. Andre Drummond to pick up option to stay with the Cavs. The two-time All-Star says he plans to pick up his player option, which is for $28.75 million for the 2021 season. That's some serious dough. He probably understands that in order for him to sign anywhere else at this point, he wants to prove it, but also he seems to like Cleveland from what he's saying to the media. Next buzz is going to be MLB target 60 game season starting around July 24th. Pending conditions are met. So they did instill their right. That was um, that they can instill a games that they're trying to get. So 60 games and they're looking to run it through September 27th. So they're going to try to get as many games in as possible in that time frame. Next one up, Detroit Lions owner Martha Firestone Ford, 94 years old, steps down and hands it over to Sheila Ford Hamp. Sheila stated, my mother has inspired all of us since taking on leadership of the Lions over six years ago, and that she has built a solid foundation for her to take forward. I don't know about solid foundation, but good for her and good for the NFC North. Lastly, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott signs ex- exclusive franchise tender for $31.4 million. The two sides have until July 15th to work out a long-term deal. Otherwise, one cannot be done until after the season. So Dak, the issue of Dak has been taken care of last but not least we will go on to benzie's bite this is going to be dedicated to a place that i've eaten the last week and i actually got to go out with my co-host from twist and green bay greg's father chief so big shout out to chief before he went back to the lost land of wisconsin um we went to lucky 13 in burnsville minnesota we had the Bang Bang Shrimp as an appetizer, which is shrimp floured, fried, and tossed in Bang Bang Sauce. Bang Bang Sauce does pack a punch, and they were delicious. I also had the Hickory Burger, which is the barbecue sauce burger. I will give Lucky 13 a three and a half stars out of five. And that's the show for this week. Make sure you're going, checking out RTF Sports Network. All of the shows on there are phenomenal. Um, Mike Buckheiser puts a lot of work into making sure that we have shows that are up to par. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Once again, go to rtfsportsnetwork.com. Also go to twistsportstalk.com to check out me and the guys. We are live every Saturday. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at TwistBenz. Stay blessed and have a great rest of your week. Peace out.